This is the afternoon edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Monday, the 27th of August. I'm James Spann. We'll take some time here and try and answer all of your questions about Isaac as the situation is much, much more clear this afternoon. Uh, we'll start with some of the Skycam shots, actually just two of them down on the Gulf Coast. This is our Skycam in Gulf Shores. And needless to say, this will be an interesting one to watch in coming days. This is atop the Phoenix All Suites that is adjacent to the Gulf Shores Public Beach. And we're looking east back toward the Sea and Suds and the State Pier. And it looks like a ghost town down there. All of the tourists are gone. Uh, many of the residents are uh, inland now. They had a mandatory evacuation starting 8 o'clock this morning. And then over on the Mobile County side, we have a sky cam at the Dauphin Island Sea Lab. And we're watching water levels. They're starting to rise a little bit. And understand at these points, the storm surge uh, tomorrow night could be in the 6 to 12 foot range. And that will cause a lot of uh, flooding from the storm surge alone. And then you got the rain itself, which is a whole other issue as we'll talk about. And in addition to flooding, we have the possibility of a few isolated small tornadoes. This is the risk for the rest of this afternoon and tonight, where you see the slight risk in yellow on the immediate Gulf Coast from basically Buras, Louisiana, all the way over to uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, that's where a few small tornadoes are possible and spiral rain bands. Now, this is the outlook for tomorrow and tomorrow night. Because of the slower forward motion of Isaac, the risk is mainly confined to the southern part of the state. Uh, that would be along and south of U.S. 80, south of the line from Demopolis to Montgomery to Auburn and Opelika. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night. For, for this end of the state, I don't think we have any tornado threat tomorrow, although showers could begin during the day. And then this is day three, Wednesday. And we've got a risk of a few small tornadoes in that slight risk zone. In Alabama, the main risk is from near Hamilton down to about Birmingham and Opelika. Uh, to the north, the tornado threat is much smaller as the helicity values are lower. And again, we stress these are not like the tornadoes of spring and fall. The violent uh, F3 or above, most tropical tornadoes are small. They don't last long. They're very difficult to warn for because they're low-topped. They're hard to see on radar. So just be aware we might have a few tornado warnings along the way through midweek. Now, this, I think, is the big issue. This is the rain expected from Isaac. Uh, the bullseye, just under 20 inches south of Mobile Bay, and, of course, the amounts taper off as you go farther north. Uh, in fact, this is suggesting for the Tennessee border area uh, north of Huntsville, uh, rain amounts of about one inch. Uh, you get down to the Birmingham Metro, three to five inches, and then you get down to Mobile and Baldwin counties, and you go over 15 inches down there. Now, this could change, but we're getting very confident now in the track. So that uh, would suggest a really good soaking for a large chunk of Alabama. Greatest potential for flooding, the southwestern counties of the state, probably south of a line from near Demopolis down to Camden and Greenville. But uh, we might see some issues up here, but I don't think widespread flooding will be a problem for Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, Aniston, and Gadsden. But again... With these tropical systems, you don't know. The, the rain can be displaced farther away from the center than you think sometimes. All right, there's the satellite presentation of Isaac this afternoon. Now, a couple of notes. We've talked about this. Number one, dry air is clearly working in the circulation uh, from the southern periphery now curving up into the uh, eastern semicircle. You can see that, and that's one of the reasons it's not growing stronger. It's not a hurricane. You know, the Hurricane Center has consistently tried to bring this up to hurricane strength for the last two days. Hasn't done it yet. Uh, and in forecasting the intensity of these things, it is harder than you might think, and it's, it's a, a skill set that's not all that good. So the dry air is one thing it's fighting. Number two, the circulation is huge. We talked about that this morning. If this were a tighter system, the strengthening process would be faster. It needs to be tight. It's like the ice skater bringing their hands in. They spin tighter on the ice. And, again, this is just a large circulation system. So uh, I think the, the fact that this will be a Category 1 at landfall is a great call, call. And the other thing, the Gulf temperatures are actually – not as warm as you might think. I don't have the graphic to show you, but uh, the SSTs are, uh, you know, not as high as they could be. And I think a lot of that might have to do with all the rains that just came down over the uh, Gulf Coast region and the northern Gulf uh, this month. So uh, I do feel confident that this will be a Category 1 at landfall. Could there be a surprise? Sure. But confidence is high. Uh, modeling. Modeling is in very good agreement. Don't expect things to change much now. Comes up into southeast Louisiana uh, tomorrow evening with a slow recurve, and that slow recurve is going to be a problem for us with the rain, I think. Here's the official track, not much change, and I don't expect a lot of change from here on out. Uh, it comes into the mouth of the Mississippi River uh, during the day tomorrow, uh, slowly coming up. And I mean, this is just a slow, look at the, the times here. 
I mean, we're talking Thursday morning. The thing is near Macomb, Mississippi. And then Friday morning, it's at Little Rock. And understand, we stay on that wet side. The east side is the wet side. So we could see some really soaking tropical rains through Thursday. And, uh, and again, we'll have to watch for the possibility of a few isolated tornadoes in those spiral bands, mainly on Wednesday. I think that's the main threat for that. Uh, and then uh, it slowly moves north. And there's a wider view of the tropics. We've got a couple of waves uh, off in the eastern Atlantic. Uh, no need to worry about those for now. That 30% uh, disturbance should recurve. And the one behind it in the Cape Verde Islands probably recurving as well. But still, many questions, and let's answer those as we go through the maps, all right? Let, let's start with the GFS. This is the Operational Global Forecast System. Uh, the 12Z run, valid at 1 o'clock tomorrow. This is the upper air pattern. Wind flow about 18,000 feet. Uh, big old 594 heat bubble. That's hot. Sit here over Denver. And uh, again, that should, in the trough over the east, you can clearly see it should pull that thing slowly north. The northward trajectory should increase with time. Uh, down below that, uh, this is 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. The GFS has this thing near the mouth of the Mississippi River. And again, that would be a tropical storm or maybe a Category 1 if the pressures are riding through there. Uh, the idea of this being a Katrina or some big disaster like that, no. And with the Category 1, you know, you're going to have, again, 6 to 12-foot storm surge. Uh, a lot of flooding, but you're not going to see a lot of structural damage or things like that. And that's uh, certainly uh, uh, good news. Wednesday at 1 o'clock p.m. local time, Wednesday, 1 o'clock central time, it just doesn't move much. I mean, goodness, the rains for New Orleans, uh, I wouldn't be shocked if they saw 20 inches of rain. Flooding, I think, is going to be a big deal uh, for New Orleans and Mobile and Gulfport and Biloxi. I mean, soaking, tremendous rains. If you live in a low-lying area, you got a problem. Um, and Wednesday up this way, we'll have to watch for you know any possible – you know, little tornadoes that might try and get going. But in that quadrant, you know, we're not going to have any tornadoes if it's that far south. It would be Wednesday night or maybe even Thursday. Look at Thursday. This is Thursday at 1 o'clock. The thing is near Monroe, Louisiana or Minden, Louisiana. Now, that's when it could get really wet. And because of the slow movement here, you know, we might see some showers tomorrow. It might even be Thursday before the mo the biggest rains get in here. Uh, so we'll just see. Then we'll go to uh, Friday. And, uh, again, the noise you're hearing, that is an ad message coming from our Ustream. I was watching our uh, feed from the uh, Storm Chaser guys, and that's what that noise was. I thought, what is that? Anyway, this is uh, Friday. The thing is uh, on the Missouri-Arkansas border. And we stay in that, you know, unsettled quadrant. We're in the southeastern quadrant, so Friday's going to be showery. Now, if you're trying to fly to Dallas for that football game out there, uh, I think you'll get out okay. Uh, you know, there might be a delay, but I don't think we'll have any problems. If you're driving anywhere, you know, tomorrow, especially Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, yeah, you're going to have some tropical rains to drive through. You just have, you know, have the radio on some source of information in case there happens to be a tornado warning and be aware of flooding issues. Um, but again, the, the most serious flooding should be south and west of here. Uh, there's Saturday as we start the weekend. What's left of Isaac is uh, south of Chicago, north of Paducah, and a little east of St. Louis. And we're still in the soupy air. I mean, these high dew points are going to roll in here. You know, we could see dew points up in the middle 70s, and they're going to stay here all week. So uh, a chance of rain every day starting tomorrow. The most widespread rain could be Wednesday and Thursday, but don't be shocked if it's very showery on Friday as well and maybe even Saturday. It's not going to rain all day, but it's going to rain at times. And this kicks off the Labor Day weekend. Sunday, same thing. That looks pretty wet. In fact, what's left of Isaac is sitting over there over Kentucky with maybe a trailing surface boundary down this way. So... Uh, that just looks uh, kind of wet for Sunday. And then Labor Day, uh, we're still kind of soupy. And hey, look down there in the lower right. Here comes another one. Uh, let's keep on uh, trucking here. We'll go to the uh, 5th of uh, September. This is the middle of next week. This one uh, moves east of Florida. And on the 7th, it's uh, near Cape Fear, North Carolina. You know, that might be that disturbance that is near the Cape Bird Islands. And boy, look at the cool air coming down the pike. That's exciting. That is refreshing looking. Those low thickness values up there in the north. But again, this is pure voodoo out here. No need to get worried about that. Goodness, we're having a hard enough time with Isaac 24 hours in advance. No need to worry about something on September 7th right now. Uh, we'll check uh, September the 12th. That still looks pretty warm. You understand, it can be hot in September here. The, the primary polar jet stream is in Canada, 588 Heat Ridge uh, to the west, and that just looks kind of quiet. And by the way, I forgot to throw this graphic in. That's the radar image from uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, that was captured at 2.04. We've had a few tornado warnings today over the Florida Peninsula, but I've heard of no major damage so far. And uh, the center of Isaac is kind of in the far 
left-hand part of those radar echoes out there right now. All right, that's it for the Weather Extreme video this afternoon. We'll have notes on the uh, blog. That's our main source of getting information to you, alabamawx.com, if you're seeing this on YouTube or iTunes. Uh, next video here by tomorrow morning at 7. Uh, a lot of things happening tonight. Of course, we'll be on the television side, uh, ABC 3340 at 4, 5, 6, and 10. We'll have a Weather Brain sp uh, regular show tonight at 8.30, and we're probably going to have a we Weather Brain special at 7 tonight. So just kind of watch the blog and watch the Twitter feed for updates. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Have a great Monday evening, and God bless.